السلام علیکم آج بات کریں گے 1987 کی بینسن اینڈ ہیجز چیلنج سیریز اور اس کو امیرکاز کپ اور پرتھ چیلنج بھی کہا جاتا تھا اٹ واز ہیلڈ ان پرتھ آسٹریلیا اور آف کورس دا ہوسٹ نیشن آسٹریلیا نے الانگ ود انگلینڈ ویسٹ انڈیز اور پاکستان نے پارٹیسپیٹ کیا تھا اس ٹورنامنٹ میں اور دوز آف اس ہو گرو اپ ان ایٹیز میڈ لیڈ ایٹیز واچنگ فالوئنگ پلینگ کرکٹ آپ لوگوں کو یاد ہوگا کہ آسٹریلیا میں جب گیمز ہوتے تھے اسپیشلی پرتھ میں جب گیمز ہوتے تھے اور ڈے نائٹ گیمز ہوتے تھے تو پاکستان میں کوئی صبح کے دس بجے اسٹارٹ ہوتے تھے اور پھر شام کو چھ ساڑھے چھ بجے تک ختم ہوتے تھے بڑا پرفیکٹ ٹائم ہوتا تھا وہ اور دس واز ایکچولی دا فرسٹ ٹورنامنٹ دیٹ واز پلیڈ انڈر فلڈ لائٹس ان پرتھ اسی زمانے میں نائنٹین ایٹی سکس میں پرتھ میں فلڈ لائٹس انسٹال ہوئی تھیں تو بڑا ایکسائٹنگ ٹورنامنٹ تھا اور دیٹ واز ون آف مائی ارلیسٹ چائلڈ ہڈ میموریز گروئنگ اپ ایز اے کرکٹ فین ان پاکستان اور آف کورس اس زمانے میں کرکٹ جو تھا وہ ٹی وی پر لائف تو بہت کم آتا تھا فار دس پرٹیکولر ٹورنامنٹ پی ٹی وی نے ہائی لائٹس ہر میچ کی شو کرتے تھے وہ دیور ایبل ٹو لائف تھاری کاس دا فائنل آف دا ٹورنامنٹ لیکن اس کے علاوہ جتنے بھی گیمس تھے تو جو کوریج تھی وہ دیٹ واز بیسکلی تھرو ریڈیو کامنٹری لیکن اس ریڈیو کامنٹری کا بھی ایک الگ مزہ ہوتا تھا اینی وے سو اٹ واز اے ویری ایکسائٹنگ ٹورنامنٹ انگرل گیم جو تھا وہ پاکستان اور ویسٹ انڈیز کا تھا نا ویسٹ انڈیز سائڈ دا مائٹی ویسٹ انڈیز سائڈ ایٹ دیٹ ٹائم دے ہیو دا لائکس آف Desmond Haynes and Gordon Greenwich and uh, Viv Richards and Richie Richardson, Jeff Dujan, Gus Logie, Roger Harper, Michael Holding, all the greats were there. Pakistan on the other side, they had a pretty decent side. Of course, we had um, uh, Javed Miyadad and Imran Khan, and then uh, Qasim Amar, extremely aggressive stroke player, opener, uh, one of my favorite uh, wicketkeeper batsmen, uh, the man of prices. We used to call him Salim Yusuf, Mansoor Allahi, a very hard-hitting all-rounder at that time. And then with a son Azhar, and uh, one of uh, a highly underrated, uh, but a very versatile uh, player of that era, uh, Asif Mushtaba, 
uh, was there. And then, of course, the next big thing, uh, Basim Akram was also part of the Pakistan squad. Uh, the first match was so Pakistan ki approach. Pakistan, uh, West Indies won the toss. Pakistan uh, were batting first. That approach in the 1980s, 90s, mein, we saw quite often uh, keep the wickets intact uh, until uh, 40th over play at an average of four runs per over. Uh, us match, I remember that 160 Pakistan ka score tha for two wickets around 44 over, uh, but then we only managed to score 199 runs for eight wickets. So the target given was a sort of a mediocre total against the mighty West Indies side of 200 runs. And they were cruising pretty nicely, uh, West Indies. And at one point they were 105 for two wickets. And it seemed like that they are going to clinch uh, the victory uh, pretty easily against Pakistan. But then things turn around in a pretty dramatic manner. Uh, in that game. Oh, a real chance of a run out here. Absolutely no oh, doubt well he's got this well all over and done with. Well <laughs> and is he happy? <laughs> I think that would have struck a little stump about halfway up. Bev Richards might just have been a little unnerved by that run out, even though he seemed to be in a happy enough frame of mind. But uh, he was right across the ball there. The equation 7.4 required, only one wicket in hand, the West Indies. Got him! Beautiful piece of bowling and a great victory by Pakistan, defending only 199 runs. They've outbowled and outfielded the West Indies in this final session. A surprise victory that won well deserved. The delighted team, they all put in. They fielded brilliantly, they threw and caught well. A surprise but great victory. So, Pakistan won the first game. And the second game was between the traditional rivals, Australia and uh, England. Now, England at that time, they were, especially against their traditional rival Australia, they were a pretty dominant and somewhat invincible side uh, at that time. They had the likes of uh, uh, Ian Botham and uh, 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 Chris Broad, uh, Mike Getting, Alan Lamb, uh, Graham Dilley. And uh, Australia, on the other hand, they were kind of in that rebuilding phase. Uh, Alan Bodder was a new captain, a lot of new blood in the side, David Boone, Jeff Marsh, uh, Simon uh, O'Donnell, and uh, Steve Ball, uh, Bruce Reed, uh, and then of course, uh, Dean Jones. Now, uh, Dean Jones uh, did not reach his full potential uh, until this tournament. Uh, he was considered uh, one of the future prospects for the Australian lineup. Uh, until that tournament, before that tournament, Dean Jones probably played around 30 one day internationals. His average was around 36, 37 runs, uh, scored around 800 or 900 runs. Uh, so there were a lot of expectations from Dean Jones in this tournament, and he did deliver. In that game against uh, England, uh, one of the highlights of that game was Dean Jones and his aggressive innings. 33 one day internationals for Dean Jones. And he starts very confidently. Should be an easy three there the way Dean Jones runs. Oh, he's hit that. it was and he heaved it over the boundary at square leg just what the doctor ordered and that's a good hit that's four runs and that's beautifully struck by Jones he's really taking the attack to the Englishman that's well hit it clears Chris Broad and the fence so a great over for Australia Dean Jones moves uh, ever closer to a century. 
Freitas. There it is, a century for Dean Jones. Now, uh, Australia lost their game against England despite Dean Jones' heroics, but uh, their, their next game was against Pakistan. So they had a chance to uh, beat Pakistan uh, and that way they, can have, they, can, they could still have a chance to qualify for the final. Pakistan, on the other hand, they wanted to build upon the existing momentum they had from their first game victory against uh, uh, West Indies. Now, I must say that Pakistan Australia got a game. Tha, uh, I personally consider, even though this game was uh, uh, 33 years ago, but Aaj Tak Mai Samashtan, that was one of the best, one of the best ODI games, Pakistan ka international game. Mai Samashtan Mai. A great game. Uh, Dean Jones showed his true class in that game against Pakistan. And then Pakistan, on the other hand, uh, they were chasing a pretty daunting target of 270 plus under lights against Australia and Australia. That's pretty daunting. Or Pakistan, they lost. Uh, uh, Kasim Umar played a brilliant knock, but they, Pakistan lost their first five wickets uh, for uh, around 100 runs. And then the middle order and the lower order, uh, they showed some some character and resilience, especially Manzoor Lahi and Salim Yusuf, and uh, and then Asif Mushtaba. Probably he played one of the best knocks of his of his career. And Dean Jones, the century maker of yesterday evening, coming in with Australia having lost their first wicket, Glenn Bishop. Oh. And that's a fine shot. Not a good ball from Jaffer. It was short, end of the cross, but Dean Jones following his century last night, full of confidence and form, and really put it away beautifully. A man out there, but he's not going to be anywhere near that. David was a fielder, couldn't get near it. Elevation in the game, WA versus Victoria, hit a long hop from Big Mark straight to Ken McClay. And that's a mighty hit. That's going to go into the crowd. That's six. That one wasn't caught by the crowd. So Mudasa now to start his last over. Beautifully placed by Dean Jones. Charlie Me and that is out on the point boundary or cover point boundary. They have absolutely no chance of cutting that one off. Dean Jones on 99, looking for back-to-back -back centuries. He's facing Imran Khan in the commentary position, Bill Laurie and Max Walker. Thank you, Ian. So it's Imran Khan from the members' end. There it is, well played, Dean Jones. Back to back hundreds, just what the doctor ordered. A very happy young man, and rightly so. Steve War, a wonderful partnership, a tremendous ovation from a crowd that has really built up here at the Wacker. Support from his teammates. Superb night. Yes, Dean Jones. 200s inside 24 hours. It's not a bad performance. In any Terrible by Dean Jones. That's one of his best shots in the magnificent innings. Charging the left-hander, hitting it beautifully through mid-wicket all along the carpet. And a good crowd loving this great batting exhibition. Brilliant footwork by Dean Jones. Turning that one into a full toss. Right in the meat of the bat. Through the vacant area at mid-wicket. It's a desperate... Dean Jones is gone, the end of a great knock. Looking to hit it over mid-wicket. Tremendous innings by Dean Jones. Two in a row, 
the concentration was superb and thanks for coming says it all are is on strike and for uh, Pakistan they need 274 for victory at a rate of 5.48 two slips for McClay and uh, it really goes for that one Kazim takes Pakistan along to 12 the first boundary of the innings Ramiz has hold out of mid off well taken by Glenn Bishop He's a tall man every centimeter Shreed that's a great shot and that's four runs magnificently played Shreed moves in now to Kazim Omar and lovely shot down the ground he doesn't move he doesn't have to tremendous drive And that's put away square on the offside this time and that's four more runs he really is timing this ball sweetly and that's the third boundary in the over so Kazim Omar really taking a toll here Bruce Reed and that's the fourth boundary of the over and he doesn't bother to move either Kazim Omar really a character of cricket Holds his bat up for his half century, which he gathered with four consecutive boundaries in that over. And Pakistan are 2 4 68. Ball in, and well bowled to. And that is a crucial wicket for Australia. Pakistan doing all right as far as runs are concerned, but they had lost one more wicket. Caught, and. Uh, he loses his boot in the process, uh, Alan Border. But he didn't need his boot, just needed a couple of safe hands, a pair of safe hands. And the fifth Pakistan wicket is down, and they're in big trouble. Oh, Kazim Omar. Just lollies that one out. Alan Border puts his best foot forward, loses the boot. Straight into the buckets. War gets his second wicket, but what a delightful knock from Kazim Omar. He really did play a superb innings. Well, he hasn't steadied him down too much. In fact, he's hit that way back. That's exactly what Imran was talking about. The hardest hitter of a cricket ball in present day cricket. It's five for 114. Two hard hitting batsmen at the crease. That is an enormous hit. There was a bit more power behind that one, but uh, it's gone well back. Edged and taken by Tim Zura. And once again, Stephen Waugh has done the job for Australia. Oh, it's straight up in the air. Whitney's going to go underneath it. Oh, they're going to collide. No, they won't. He's got him. He's out caught. Well, it's a big wicket for Australia because Mansour can be a real danger man. That one went high, three of them were converging on it, but at the end of the day, Whitney had his way. Well, when he went off, he was kissing his bat, and now he's placed his lips upon his ball. Have a look at that, down she comes, and there was no way he was gonna, whoops, it just nearly popped out. Mansur and Lai, he played very well. 48 from 44 balls face, 7 for 181. We hit that one high and over the top. Well played. What a beautiful shot down to mid on. Well done, it's right. He's Pakistan. He's off yet. It's in the air. It's in the air and it's going to be caught. O'Donnell's under it. He's got him. He's gone. That's a big wicket for Australia. Michael Whitney has struck again. And surely that wicket is going to make the difference for Australia. And that's struck, and that's Dean Jones' style of a shot. Beautifully timed by Asif Simon O'Donnell, just short of a good length. He gripped him over mid-wicket. That's the equation. A frightening one from the Australian point of view. Very close indeed. Oh, bad ball when he strikes, he beats cover, this could be four. Jones, the century maker, putting in the big ones. He'll go down for the slide, and he doesn't make it, or does he? He knocks 
of the screen and back for three, four, says umpire Steve Randall. What an effort from Dean Jones. Eight balls, 11 runs there, in with a big chance, Pakistan. That's good hit. There's nobody out there. That's high. It's facing towards the boundary, and that's four. So Pakistan, if they keep their cool, will win this match. Seven, six to tie, seven to win. That could be out. It's in the air. Whitney's under it. That was not a good shot, and he's got it. Oh, the crowd go wild. So the little man is on strike as if wasn't head bowed, possibly overconfident it wasn't needed a slog. He did it. The pressure got to him. And War, who has got great confidence in, was just short of a good length. And Whitney took the pressure catch and 17,000 fans jumping to their feet. He'll tug on the onside, there's no doubt about that. He's got a deep long line, a deep mid-wicket, and Alan Border himself some 50 metres at mid-wicket 45. Stephen Wall, has it on strike. Gets it fine. He plays down there, he's racing quick, can he get it? He knocks it down, it's three for two. And Asif retains the strike, the trace wild. They're going for the third. The trace up there, and he's home safely. Goodness gracious me. One for a tie. Will he swing with the pressure get to the number 11? He swings that victory. So at least a tie, they go for two, and Pakistan win off one of the all-time great wins. What a performance. A win for Pakistan. We leave you here at the WACA ground in Perth with memories of that match, Australia against Pakistan, and the tremendous performance put up by Imran Khan and his men. For the moment, it's good night. So, Pakistan, uh, uh, even though they lost their third game against England, uh, the pool game, uh, they still qualified for the final. England on the other side, they were unbeaten uh, and they uh, uh, also qualified for the final. And the final, unfortunately, was a one-sided game. Tha. Uh, Pakistan ne pehle batting ki 160 plus Pakistan run kar saka. Miyadad scored 77 runs and because of Miyadad, uh, uh, Pakistan ne somehow a uh, uh, fighting score. Uh, Boski, otherwise things could have been even worse. Uh, the 77 runs, uh, not out score, not uh, England had some initial hiccups. Uh, their openers, they lost their openers, including uh, Chris Broad, who was one of the successful batsmen of the tournament. And but still, they managed to score the runs, uh, score, uh, uh, chase the target uh, pretty easily uh, with five wickets down and. England, they won the tournament. Uh, that tournament is perhaps uh, the turning point uh, in Dean Jones' career. He was the highest run scorer in that tournament. And I think uh, from there onwards, his career just uh, progressed in, in, in just one direction. He, uh, in that year, he scored at an average of 46 runs. Uh, the next year was even more successful. He scored at an average of 55 runs. 1990, I think he was most destructive. His average was around 70 runs in one day internationals, uh, 300, several 50s. Uh, and simultaneously, he was a key part of Australian test squad as well. And uh, he was the integral uh, piece uh, of uh, the revival of Australian cricket as well as their World Cup winning campaign of 1987, as well as the uh, the campaign to regain Ashes in 1989 against a very dominant English side. And that started a 16 year long dominance over England that uh, spanned across uh, from, spanned from 1989 until 2005. Uh, Dean Jones, Bharti, he was a very innovative, uh, very extremely brilliant player in the field. Zabudas fielder, uh, running between the wickets, running between the wicket was something uh, nobody used to pay any attention uh, to that part of the game. And uh, that's something uh, Dean Jones introduced that, uh, that concept, that science of how to uh, uh, convert your singles into doubles. And then of course his aggression on the pitch when, when batting, uh, moving down the pitch, 
when the ball has not been when the baller has not even delivered the ball the only other player i saw doing that in that era was salim malik uh mujhe yaad hai jab ricky ponting uh, started his career uh, he reminded me so much of dean jones uh dean jones uh on the field of the field uh in the dugout uh, as a commentator in the commentary box his presence was just infectious his energy is uh enthusiasm uh uh, uh his 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 untimely death is just such a big loss to the world of cricket uh everyone especially the pakistan cricket fans are extremely devastated pakistan ke liye kafi bada loss hai uh, he could have been our coach uh dean jones uh but he was the man behind the success of slavabad united he uh he was probably going to revive karachi kings as well and uh extremely sad extremely shocking uh rest in peace professor dino you will be missed jones is one of the best one day batsmen in the world is almost unstoppable Oh, he smashed that one. It's gone miles. It's a big six. Huge six there from Dean Jones. He's decided to let loose. Good hit. There's a man out there, but he won't get it. Crips that beautifully over the circle. That'll go all the way to the wideish one on superb strike. Well run and Ian Jones has just beaten that return. So Jones really is blasting himself around this ground. Oh, just reach out and catch it, Jeffrey. What a magnificent hit. Very, very swift. That's the hundred for Dean Jones. A hundred in each innings. I can tell you that is one of the best innings he will ever play. That's a great shot for Dean Jones. This is typical Jones. A beautiful shot. That's a huge. 